Um, okay, so hello everyone that's here so far. Um, I have my own business called the Eco News, which I have started up myself um, running a sustainable newspaper. Basically, the newspaper is to share news about sustainable living, small businesses, news around the world that you don't hear about, and basically just shouting out about all the good that we're doing for the environment, what's not so good, um, but kind of keeping that happy balance so you understand that it's not a bad thing. What we are doing is making a difference and that we've just all got to work together to get there in the end. Um, so here is what I produce. It's a 28 page newspaper. I'm bringing out spring, summer, autumn and winter editions. Um, and I am just about to release a monthly newsletter as well that everyone could um, purchase throughout. So you're not waiting every three months for my newspaper. You can get news every month as well. Um, and in the monthly newsletter, I'm going to do about simple sustainable swaps, events that are happening around the world, in the UK, um, and loads of just little top tips um, to keep you going. I also have a kids version, which I've brought out. And this is basically to help young, the younger generation educate them. Um, it's full of like fun activities, what you can make from recycled bottles and your recycled waste, um, and just basically trying to encourage them to do things for sustainable living as well. So my first topic is gonna be like the EC household swaps that you can do. So my favourites are bamboo toothbrushes, reusable bags, cleaning products. Um, does anyone have anything that they've done that they enjoy doing or any companies they've recently swapped to? Um, I quite like the um, little like uh, reusable cotton pads. They're quite good um, for skincare and doing and taking off your makeup and stuff like that yeah no they're really good as well because obviously they help reduce waste of the wipes because we all know they're not um made from sustainable material um yeah you just keep them and wash them they're really really good does anyone have anything that they've done no <laughs> got anything else saffron that you've done um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head because sort of, it, I suppose you do it so gradually, don't you? You kind of yeah. forget what you have swapped. I think that's really important, sort of doing it, doing it gradually. Um, oh, um, shampoo bars, shampoo bars and shower gel bars are, are really great. Um, yeah, that you can get a little tin to put them in so you can, you know, take them away with you on holiday. And when we eventually get to fly again, it means you don't have to worry about counting it as a liquid going for the airport. So, Oh, yeah, that's a really <laughs> good one, actually. Yeah, no, that is really good. Yeah, the shampoo bars, um, everyone's always worried to use. But to be fair, you just got, got to give them a bit of a chance because obviously everyone's hair is used to their own shampoo. I find that people struggle not to believe in them, but they're no different to being in a bottle. They're just in a bar of soap. Um, but yeah, you just, do you just have to use them a few times and then your hair just naturally gets used to them. So, yeah, they are... Um, a really good swap um so one of show you one of my favorites i've got turtle bags this company i really really love um obviously they're all mesh and bright colorful um so it makes shopping a bit more fun <laughs> um and they use all natural dyes and colors so that's a definite go-to if you're going shopping um another one i think saffron as well you like small which is the big cleaning company they do um, sprays they do your dishwasher tablets they do your laundry tablets and this is a great one because everything comes in cardboard and they're just in little dissolvable packets inside so you don't have any plastic waste they literally just go in your dishwasher and it's the same with the washing tabs for your washing machine as well um, and they're on a monthly subscription um, and what's really good about this is you calculate how many times you do your dishwashing or your clothes washing a week uh, um, to month and they calculate it for you and then they ship it out in the post um, so it's a good way of not over buying or overspending or wasting products um, they, they pretty much work it out for you and so far to my calculations they have sent them to me every time on time so it's really really good so it's a good way to stop waste 
Um, and then I've currently run out of my toothbrushes. Um, I'm literally waiting for them to arrive. But I use this company here called Little Green Orca. And they are basically a bamboo based um, company. Um, everything they do is bamboo based. Um, and I've found that their toothbrushes are the best in terms of lasting long um also you find with bamboo because it gets wet it can get a little bit moldy and it kind of puts you off in a toothbrush but they have decided on theirs just to use just a little bit of paint on the bottom uh which they've used with natural dyes um so when you're putting it in your toothbrush holder it then doesn't turn um moldy so it's really really good um and also their toilet paper as well is the same it's long um bamboo pulp and things like that um so yeah that's my favorite for a sustainable switch um, and here again another like you said the shampoo bars this is a uh, country cottage so these are i think midland somewhere and they they just make them um at home they started i think before lockdown um creating their own soaps um so there's a lot of different bars out there so what i would say is if you're thinking of swapping to a shampoo bar then keep looking because you might find one that's suitable for your hair because loads of people out there are starting to make them with different natural ingredients um so yeah that's what i'd say on that um does anyone have any questions on any sustainable swap ideas that they've had and they don't know of any companies that they could go to or anything like that um i can i can add i've recently swapped to a deodorant that's refillable yeah uh, okay I've heard of them. they're called wild they're really great um it comes they get in a little sort of uh tin and you sort of can put the refills in there and sort of wind it up um yeah i've got the i can, I can show you the, the thing <laughs> yeah it looks like that they're they're really really great yeah. um, and a bit similar to smile you can sort of get a subscription so however often you go through them you can just sort of put it on repeat and you don't have to worry about remembering to reorder it yeah, no, it's really good. Um, I use Wild as well. Um, I'm currently using the the peach scent, which is very, very nice. It was their limited edition that came out a few months ago. Um, yep, Wild is um a re really high up there in terms of they've completely worked out how to be sustainable. Like they've got the aluminium casing, so you know they're recyclable if you ever damage it or break it. The cartons that they come in, they're made from I think it's a is it a special pulp as well? Yeah, I think it is. It kind of feels a card like cardboard. Yeah, it's like cardboard, but it's, it's something mixed in there. So it's more plant based and recyclable. So it's really good. Um, yeah, does anyone else have anything to ask? <laughs> okay, so um, the next topic for me was reducing consumption and waste. Um, so we all know that we waste a lot of waste. <laughs> Um, so it's trying to just think of how we can reduce, obviously, the use of plastics. Um, fast fashion is obviously a big problem. Um, even when you're going to the supermarket, you just buy all your shopping and don't actually think about what it's packaged in. Um, so just some simple things for me is when I go shopping, obviously, you can't get everything out of packaging. Obviously, your fruit and vegetables, you can. Um there's a few meats obviously you can get out off the counter that is not already packaged your fish you can get off the counter um but most things you buy it, it is packaged either in plastic um yeah it's mainly plastic so for me what i do is i actually go more for the materials that are a bit more reusable so for example anything in an aluminium tin can is better than buying something plastic because with aluminium they recycle it a lot more wider than they can plastic like plastic is only recycled a certain amount of times compared to aluminium Al aluminium's recycle rate is a lot higher um, and another one that i always go to is glass because glass can always be reused in a recycle bank it, you can take that to any glass recycle bank and also another thing as well is with jars you can always use them at home you just give them more shout you can turn it into a flower vase you can create little pots for your uh, sugar tea and coffee um you can it, you can just use it for extra storage um so for me i always go for the materials that seem better and we all know that plastic is one of the worst 
competitors, shall we say, and that we need to reduce on it. So that's just a simple way of reducing the use of plastic when you're going shopping. It's just think about what material you're actually picking up and try and avoid the plastic materials and go even for the cardboard. Cardboard's a lot more recyclable. Anything that's packaged up in a paper, um, just try and go to plastic as like your, your last option. Um, and then moving to fast fashion, um, for us women, obviously, we love to shop. Um, but I think we all know over the years that fashion has kind of taken over in the way of there's companies out there, out there now that just release clothes for so cheap. They sell in thousands and we know they only last five minutes. Um, there is obviously male side as well. They have also got companies out there that are now starting to produce um poor poor quality clothing um so yeah i think fast fashion is something that we all need to tackle and it, it on both sides male and female um and i know people struggle on on where to go um so i do know a few good places um that have launched and what i find works best for me um i'm just going to read comments um oh okay so paul i saw your saying um yeah i agree paul. yeah so good quality i think that that's the main key it's all about quality um so for me i find things are a little bit more expensive in the eco world um and sustainable manufacturing is not really um up there in the ranking at the moment it's all about producing things as quickly as you can um and also the thing with fashion is keeping up with the fashion trends um so that's what businesses are always doing they're always working so quickly to get fashion out the door whereas for me i think it's finding that product that you really love and putting your money towards that and knowing that it's come from a good place and good materials um it's been manufactured correctly it's done in a fair way um so another thing for me is obviously you do get to a point where you might outgrow something um you might have ripped a sleeve um but there's a ways around um not just chucking it out um and making it waste um so one big thing that i was quite proud of, of facebook is marketplace that got obviously released um and for me i think that's a great way for communities to swap items so much stuff on there is advertised for free. Um, you can sell things for a tenner, but that could be worth so much more for someone else. Um, and I think it's just a good way to upcycle and recycle. Um, so yeah, I think even though Facebook isn't one of globally known as a sustainable company or anything, I just think they've got a good feature there that people can use to recycle. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend it. I use it all the time for myself. Um, I've just moved house, uh, for example, my sofa's downstairs. I got locally from someone um, recently, um, two brand new sofas that they they just didn't fit in their house. Unfortunately, the delivery got wrong, but for me, it fitted perfectly. So there's always a way of working around the problems because otherwise, if I didn't take them, they would have gone back to the factory. You can't then resell them because they've been unpackaged, they've been touched, um, and then they kind of get chucked out as waste. Um, so it's just trying to think of good ways to reuse. Um, in terms of like the fashion side, you've got quite a few apps now and companies who are setting up websites where you can swap your clothing, which I think is brilliant. Um, I've never experienced um, swapping yet, but it's something I definitely want to do. But at the moment, there's a lot of companies that are doing it and I just don't know who the best person to go with. Um, I, I use Vinted a lot, which is a great app. Um, this can be for male and female. Um, so you can up, upload your clothes, sell them, swap them, um, or just let people have them for a pound um, if you're trying to get rid of your clothing. Um, so that's a really, really, really good app. Um, another one that's been re re released recently is called Fred Up. And this is more aimed at the higher end of brands. So the designer clothing. 
Um, for celebrities, you know, they're high in fast fashion. They wear something once to an event and then it goes in the wardrobe. They've now offered for them to be able to sell their clothes. So you can go on there and see who's worn it um, and then buy it and have it for yourself. So it's quite an incentive as well um, for everyone out there to reuse clothes. Um, so there's a lot of people now who celebrity wise who are uploading to Fred up. So it's really good, I think, as well, from that point of view that everyone's trying to make a difference because everyone knows in fashion in in the designer industry it's even bigger because they're using clothes just there and then to model a event or yeah it's just it's just a much bigger consumption um so i think it's good that they're now offering their clothes to anyone um in the world and if you've got a favorite celebrity you can follow them and then say oh yeah i now own a bit of their clothing um, so I think that's quite nice as well um, for you if you, you've got someone that you follow. Um, and I think it's good for designer brands because their brands are then being reused. And for those who can't quite afford them, you can then go on there and find it half the price. Um, so it's really encouraging to do that. Um, so there's lots of different elements in terms of fashion. Obviously, the most popular one and obvious one is charity shops. So for me, I lo absolutely love a charity shop. I feel like everyone should donate their clothes to charity because obviously not are we only doing good for our planet, but we're doing good for charities out there as well. Um, and yeah, th th that, that's one of my all time favourites. Um, does anyone have any questions or any input of what they do for sustainable fashion? I think just to um, repeat on sort of Paul's point of buying quality, like if you if you can afford to buy quality items and intend to wear them for a really long time, that's one of like the biggest things that you can do. Um, and I know like a lot of sustainable companies as well um, that maybe have like the B Corp or 1% uh, for the planets sort or of certifications, they kind of produce their clothes at a higher quality so, and they're kind of bringing into account the sustainability as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just, I suppose the most sustainable thing you you know, is the thing you already have at, yes. at home. Um, so yeah, just, yeah, I, I suppose that's like one way of reducing, isn't it? Just by not buying anything at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. And to be fair, you could not buy anything at all. You could go to the apps like Vinted and swap something that you've already got. Or instead of going and buying something new, the most important thing to me now is not buying new. Um, go out there and find something unique. Like, for me, one thing I've always been known for by my friends is having quite a different style to everyone. And I think that's because I go out there looking for something that you're not always going to find. The people bring out like limited edition clothing that you only would see once advertised, but then 10 years down the line, you'd forget about it. But it could still be out there. So I'm all about as well trying to bring back the old styles and the old trends and kind of rebranding them in that sense as well. Um, so yeah, there's there's plenty of ways out there to recycle fashion, and yeah, just got to now and try and avoid the fast fashion as much as we can. And I think companies out there are now realising that this isn't something they can carry on with, um, and they are trying. Um, but unfortunately, we all know that greenwashing is a bit of a problem. Um, so there is a few companies out there who have already announced that they're sustainable when they're not, and you just got to be careful and just think about it before you buy and try not to just believe in the advertising because they know it's the future, but don't let them take advantage of your thinking. I would try and stick with, yeah, just stick with what you know and try not to follow their trends and try and think about what you're buying before you buy. And there's a lot of labels and certificates that they all need. So just do your research on those as well and make sure that when you are buying that you are keeping within the standards and yeah what you know um okay so yes yeah, so um for me what i'll do paul is because you've mentioned about buying locally um for food and helping british um so growing your own food is one of my big topics um so actually this week and well starting from the 24th of may is actually british tomato fortnight so this is quite a good example of an event that's thrown in the uk so basically we're known in the uk for growing the best tomatoes 
and to be honest I think we can all grow tomatoes here like we have such good British weather for it and one thing I have always grown is tomatoes um, but the the reason behind British uh, tomato fortnight is just to encourage people to show them that we can grow here in the UK and we don't have to have everything imported because when you import the tomatoes you've got to think they're grown abroad they're then stored on a container ship then they've got to get here then they've got to be unpackaged and then transported to a shop so you've got to think that tomato before it even gets to your kitchen has actually had quite a long journey and for me it always worries me to think how has it survived that long in a journey when you know that you go can go pick a tomato in your garden and you put it in your fridge and it will only last you a few days so how how do we get tomatoes here so quickly and how can they still be so fresh when they end up in our supermarkets so yeah so for a big thing for me is definitely always look for the British label um because when you see it's come from Spain or Italy you just got to think to yourself well how, how has it got here and how is it still this fresh um and unfortunately it's not organic and it's not healthy for us um, and we've got to support and look after our own countries as well, because our farming is a big part of our ecosystem and that's worldwide, not just here in the UK. Um, so we really, really do need to look after our lands and our farming. Um, so, yeah, I definitely agree there, Paul, that by British. Um, so what I um, did through lockdown was um, obviously lockdown wasn't a nice experience um, but to get myself through I actually hired a, an allotment in my local village for the year and I've never done anything like this before I've always grown tomatoes and spinach and cucumbers in my own garden but because I had so much time on my hands I wanted to give it a go and I have to say it was like the best experience ever for my age it's probably a very random thing to say you wouldn't really expect someone young to have their own allotment um and I have to say I was the youngest up there watering my plants every night I was up there with the people who have had allotments for years so it was really lovely but also very educational in the way of they were so experienced they helped me with growing all my vegetables um and I also done it in partner with um, my neighbor and her little girl so it was really nice um, for her to learn as well on growing your own food. We'd go back in the evening and cook our own courgettes um, and share our recipes. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's really quite nice and rewarding that you've grown it yourself and then you're eating it yourself and you you see the process. So, you know what's behind what you're eating um, and it's quite, yeah, really quite enjoyable. Um, so, yeah, I think we grew. Um, yeah, it was quite a lot we done cucumbers raspberries strawberries um butternut squash uh spinach sweet corn yeah so we had a pretty much our own little farm and it was it was absolutely amazing um does anyone here grow grow anything of their own no <laughs> no oh so well there we go so maybe that's one thing you can um take home um it's gonna be a nice sunny weekend maybe pop to the garden center and um get yourself some seeds and um yeah maybe just all you need is a like tomatoes is the easy one you literally need a garden pot some soil um and a couple of bamboo sticks to hold up um the vines and literally uh, plant them let them get a little bit stronger, plant them inside first for a couple of weeks, let them um, sprout. And then as soon as they're just like three inches up the bamboo stick, then pop it outside, make sure you water them every night. And then, yeah, four to six weeks down the line, you have a good um, produce of tomatoes um, for the next um, month or two. Um, so, yeah, it's um, definitely a good way of knowing that your own vegetables is basically your own organic um so yeah oh paul so you had green beans and carrots oh carrots is a good one they're really um quite interesting to watch grow actually um yeah you you kind of have to stick your finger in the soil to see how much they're growing down so that's that's a really um quite interesting one to grow um i haven't actually done green beans so maybe i'll try that um, but yeah, it's really important, I think, to eat your own vegetables. And like you say, you, you then decide what you're having for dinner and you go pick it from your garden, prepare it and cook it. Um, for me, I think that's that's really important. Does anyone have anything on that? 
I, I suppose as well, like growing your own veg kind of makes you realize how much effort goes into to growing food and it probably helps reduce food waste. I suppose if you're picking it straight from the plant, you don't have to worry about the other ones on the plant going off too quickly. Uh, so you can kind of just use it as and when you need it. I suppose yeah. to a certain extent anyway <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah obviously food waste is obviously another big problem um because we mass produce everything um and it gets imported like I said like we don't know how long it's actually been on the container ship and we don't know how long it's taken to get to that to the shop um so a big thing I think supermarkets struggle with is you go in a shop on, on a Friday and they will have everything reduced and for me, that's that's quite scary to see how many yellow labels you actually see around a supermarket at the end of the week. And you know for a fact that that doesn't go anywhere afterwards. Um, it probably does go into a bin or, yeah, unfortunately, you can't do anything with it. So I think that's one thing by buying only UK um, based or wherever you're based is important um, because you're definitely helping food waste um, go down if you're just buying locally um and like you said as well i i use local farm shops quite a lot because you can get to a sunday and go oh i fancy making a roast dinner today um and you can go get all your vegetables locally and then you don't spend the money buying bags of onions bags of potatoes and then if you don't use them by the end of the week there's always that way of then oh it's it's gone off what what do i do with it you don't really want to put it in your compost waste bin or you don't want to put it in your bin um, but one thing um, that's quite popular, um, it sounds really odd, but a lot of people do like a mouldy veg stew or a lasagna um, or they make it into a soup. Um, it's one thing actually during winter, um, me and my partner done quite a lot. Um, we called it mouldy stew weekend. Um, so we would literally just gather everything left over in the fridge um, and just put it in a stew um, so yeah that's that's another good way as well don't think that just because it's got a little bit of mold on it that you've got to chuck it in the bin um you can cut the mold off if it, it obviously you'll know if it's way past its its date but yeah don't think as well that mold is a bad thing in sense of like oh yep, it's got mold on it it's gone off you you can get the, the mold cut off and put it into something um and make a glorious soup or stew um so yeah it's just thinking as well what what other ways you can use it like another one of my favorites is like if I've got um some plums or apples left over and I know by the end of the week I'm not going to eat them I'll put them into an apple crumble or make them into a pie or a favorite I did um last week was banana cookies so there's always just ways that you can you can actually kind of recycle your your food as well in a strange way just try and yeah think outside the box a little bit and put it into different recipes um that you wouldn't really think of um when I say to people oh do you want a banana cookie at work they're a bit like mm, no I'm okay it, it sounds a bit odd um because you're used to your chocolate cookie um but yeah there's always ways that you can make things sweet using your fruit um yeah does anyone else have anything else on that banana loaf bread like all loaf cakes really nice as well yeah so that is that is, see that's where people think I'm a bit strange at work because I bring in banana cookies and they're like oh isn't it supposed to be banana bread <laughs> um so yeah but that's that just proves that you can you can make it into anything um yeah I always put my fruit into cookies I just have always made cookies since I was younger um and also my recipe doesn't include eggs which people um think that's quite strange but that's where again you kind of got to think out loud like there's always ways to make something um without using all, all food consumption because obviously poor old chickens we know they obviously get um in in the big farms they get used a lot for producing lots of eggs um and chicken um so that's one thing i try i just try not to use things that i know that i used a lot um so there's there's always around it could you share some of your recipes? Maybe um, we could put them up on the website or something. It's yeah, sort of yeah. The best recipes for leftover food might be a. Yeah, like, yeah. So yeah, I can yeah. I can do that. Yeah, I'll I'll make a yeah I'll make a, a note to uh, do that for you. Um, so um, what was another one? Um, so I guess back to um, greenwashing. Um, obviously this is a topic. Uh, so how do you tell who is greenwashing? OK, so that's a good question. So H&M is going to be my example. <laughs> so this um, is quite a um, yeah good example. So 
H&M are a big fashion brand for women, men and kids. Um, I think they also do home wear and stuff like that sometimes. Um, but basically, um, everyone knows the future is sustainable living and sustainable materials. Recently, H&M have already launched um, adverts on the TV with um, children involved saying about how they want to save the planet, how they want to do this, how they want to do that. Unfortunately, they may be advertising that they are doing sustainable change and they've changed their materials, they've changed their way of producing. Um, They're trying to um, basically promote that they've already made a change, but it, it doesn't happen that quickly. It is a lot of work and time and effort that goes into it. There's one company out there who is really working hard towards it and I follow them quite closely which is super dry the owner of him he has a background of organic cider he has a background of organic farming supporting them um he has yeah a a, a much bigger um story behind what he's doing and super dry is obviously another big fashion brand and for me you can just see the difference h&m have come out of the blue and all of a sudden they've got delivery vans that are covered in green writing save the planet we are sustainable for me that's that's not how it should come across you should see the progress and the story and all the effort that they're making to get to being sustainable so greenwashing you just got to kind of take a step back and think well what have they really done for me yeah it's all about the story about what they're doing um so also another thing as well is in terms of like the trademarks that they should have like you've got fair trade you've got organic cotton fsc for trees um that's all important information as well and you would look on h&m and you can't see any of this information whereas you can see with super dry they're being shouted about by big magazines they're being shouted about by the news because he really really has made an effort and you can see that he's working with farmers um in italy he's working yeah he's working with everyone whereas h&m you don't know who they're working with you haven't seen any information about what they're doing you haven't seen how their journey has started it is literally all of a sudden just come out of the blue that we are sustainable and to me yeah it just has no story so that's kind of a way to tell about greenwashing it's all about research and understanding of the business um, and that's one thing that I really, really look into. And if you want to make sure that you're not being greenwashed, do your research on the company, read about it, see what they really, really have done, because you should be able to find it if they have done it. Um, And unfortunately, H&M is one of those ones that there's just no background story at the moment. Um, Anyone else got any questions? I suppose, just just to add to that, I guess it's like any kind of brand that makes a sudden switch from being like a regular brand to having as you say everything green um and yeah I get I guess that's kind of alarm bells and there's quite a lot of words as well that um that aren't actually haven't got like a legal definition so like I think the word sustainable like legally doesn't actually mean anything and anybody could claim to be sustainable because you don't have to like prove yeah that you are um I know obviously things like organic, um, you do need to make sure you've got those certifications there and it, you know, is a requirement. Um, so yeah, that, I suppose that makes it quite tricky, doesn't it? Um, yes. Basically sustainable is overall. It's not, it's not defined. We're, we're trying to sustainably live. Um, so there's not really a yeah, definition behind that. I totally agree. Um, anything organic, anything vegan, and it just those those two words are actually the more important words. Sustainable is yeah is not up there. You need to find those two words. Like fair trade that that's important. Um, that that's the things you want to look for. Um, and also for obviously with trees, FSC, that, that there is things you do need to look out for. And yeah, for me, sustainable change is what we're doing. It's not it's not a label. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, it is is so it's so difficult um sort of with the yeah with with the 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 fact that you can't you can't like guarantee that it's something is sustainable just because it says it is it would be great if we if we could get that kind of you know standard but i guess that's why we've got the the b corp um and one percent for the planet yeah uh, there's also is it cradle to cradle is another one like yeah another- 
certification that's like that's like the, one of the top certifications if a brand's got that they've you know sort of absolutely done everything they possibly can sustainability wise yeah um, yeah that's it there's a lot there's a lot of companies out there now who they are like your main certified companies that you want to look for um yeah so Colin you've mentioned about symbols um and logos can be confusing and yeah they they can be um and unfortunately there's people that use symbols out there that they think they mean something but they haven't actually done their research on the company um we'll have to maybe share to everyone after on here or on the website like good labels to look out for um, and also what's the hardest thing is you've got the labels out there that you, a class is certified, but also you don't actually know what the story is behind the labels and how they got there. So, yeah, labels and logos and certification, what words mean, it, it is really hard. And I think that's why the whole story of greenwashing has started, because people aren't using things in the right way. So, yeah, just got to, more the research, the better. Um, like for me, um, like you said, things are recyclable. So there's a lot of companies out there now. Um, Amazon are actually quite bad for this. Um, so most of their products, they're bringing out their organic range, their vegan range and saying it's 100 percent vegan or it's 100 percent recyclable. Then unfortunately, when you actually get into the depth of the product, you look further down at the details and you'll see that it says 70 percent is recyclable. And for me, I don't know how companies get away with saying they're recyclable when it's only a certain percentage. Like, what, what's the other 30 percent? And that to me isn't acceptable. We should all be feeling like we, could tr we can trust what we're buying. Um, and that's one thing I've heard a lot recently is that everyone is making out that they're recyclable. But actually, when you get down to the nitty gritty side of it, it's only like 50 percent, 70 percent, 60 percent. Well, why are we not at 100 percent? If you can get that far up, what's stopping you from getting so far? So for me, I think that's where as well people struggle that when you get to 70 percent, I think they can't get to the 100 percent because they don't quite know how to get the certificate or they're not willing to get to the certificates that they need. And also trying to get to the certified certificates is probably hard for people because it's going to cost money. It's going to be more money in materials. Production is going to be higher. And also I think people were scared to make that jump because once they turn to sustainable, really there's no going back. And for me, one thing I find is everyone says that eco products are a lot more expensive. Of course they're going to be because they're made by better materials. Um, the way that we're manufacturing at the moment isn't, isn't the way that we're remanufacturing. We need to kind of take the movement forward that eco-friendly products is the future. And eventually you will find the price will settle down and it'll even out and we will, it will get lower, but you need more people to do it to make it worthwhile um, you need to produce more. You need to. It's it's like how all these companies started years and years ago. You've got you've got to start, start somewhere. Um, so I think that's where we've got to really really back the eco companies and push them and share about them, shout about them, buy them, and just yeah, force them on. Yeah, saffron. Just wondering, um, if you're saying obviously they are a little bit, you know, sort of expensive I suppose and maybe for a household or a family it might not be something that's doable at least maybe not for every single product mm -hmm. uh, so I suppose two questions really um number one if you can't afford sort of those eco products is there anything you can do to support those brands and to or maybe you, do you know what I mean to get the word out there even if you can't support it financially and secondly if you are going to make some swaps and maybe you can't afford to make all the swaps but you can maybe afford to make a couple yeah. what would be the best swaps to make sort of the most affordable swaps for people or even saving money because there's so many eco things that you can do that do save money as well um yeah so I was just wondering what your sort of advice would be for people who maybe have a more of a limited income or don't you know want to sp spend that income I suppose yeah so yeah so obviously the, for, for those um that can't make the swaps because things are expensive for me I would just support them in the way of like tell your friends about them or maybe say, message them and say can you suggest um, something that I can do um, to make a, a bit more of an easier swap um, there's a lot of companies out there because they are small they might even give you a free gift and just see how you get on um, 
it's, it's, it's all about small businesses. It's all about support for them. They're not out there to to make the money from you. They want they want to make a difference. And I think that's the most important thing behind our brands. Um, and making swaps isn't easy. Like you can't make all your swaps in one week and think, right, I've done it. Um, it is it is expensive. And I think that's where people are struggling most. Um, but like you said, there's so many things that you can do, which isn't going to cost you money. Um, I actually did do in my um, first edition. It's just a tick list once a month. Um, just make that swap. Um, and then by the end of the year, you've actually done 12 swaps. Um, and because you've done them all, you, you don't realise them 12 swaps actually make such a ma- massive impact for the year. Um, and if everyone did that, then we're making massive progress already. Um, so it's just getting there and it's going to take a few years for the changes to take place and things like that. So for me, like the, the most simple things is your toothbrush. So you, you, you buy your toothbrush from your local store, have, have a look online and just see if there's one company that you really like, um, that you'd like to support and see if they do a bamboo one. Um, another one is toothpaste. Um, there's a company out there called uh, Eco Living and they basically do like little tablets um, and there is it's exactly the same price as buying your oral wee toothpaste. Because one thing as well, you've got to think, some of our stuff is quite expensive to buy um you, you, our toothpaste can be expensive a bottle of mouthwash can be expensive and for things like healthcare and looking after yourself um you you do go for the expensive products obviously as women we go for expensive hair products um for men they go f- for for expensive um shaving products um so when you actually balance it out as well sometimes it works out um the same price um because eco products also last longer whereas when you buy something from the supermarket it could be cheaper but it won't last as long so there's a lot of like factors to take into place when you are shopping eco it's not about expense only as well it's it's about how long it lasts so for me a good one example is like the shower blocks um for washing yourself the shampoo and conditioner bars you buy a bottle of shampoo it will last you a month or two a shampoo bar can last can last you up to three to four months so when you actually think about the price it kind of then balances itself back out um so yeah it's, it is really 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 hard um but there's different ways that you can counterbalance your your spending or if you feel like oh I want to make that swap don't feel like you're, you've pressured and you've got to do it there and then just think oh what what else could I do to before I can get to that point just do the little swaps first the bigger swaps will come come in the future and I think as time goes on it will get a lot easier for everyone um but yeah there, there's loads of things um I know as obviously parents obviously having your kids as well it's it's a struggle for them making your kids obviously they might not want to make the swap change in their toothbrush they might have a favorite character toothbrush but there is people out there who are trying to make fun with kids as well um and doing like colorful toothbrushes like dyeing their bamboo in plant in a plant-based dye um so yeah it's, it's again it all goes back to research and yeah I'm, I'm always happy to suggest um companies out there um yeah, does, is that all right? Is there anything else to add to that? Yeah, I suppose, as you're saying about emailing companies, I suppose that's a good thing to do. If you, maybe there's a brand that you like and you want to stick with them and they're an affordable price, you could email them to say, I really like your products, but could you maybe make your packaging out of cardboard or could you make a bamboo toothbrush or, uh, you know, or, or whatever um, to sort of maybe, I suppose, make it more mainstream and I suppose make you know if you ask and ask and ask maybe eventually you might get somewhere they well might, the, this is the thing be. yeah the future the future is cha- changing our products um so yeah if there is a company out there that you love uh, why, why not reach out to them and email them and say look why why can't you do this or yeah change to cardboard tr- try and reduce plastic or if you think you've got an idea try and help them out um everyone kind of knows that it it is going to be the future and I think we've all got to work together and just yeah do our best on trying to reduce our waste um and yeah I I, that's a really good point I think yeah reaching out to everyone and also if you can't buy from them don't feel bad I would say do something else in return like um share their link to their shop or shout about them on your social media page 
it, it, it's, it's not about just buying their products. It's, it's just about sharing the companies who are trying to do good for the planet. Um, yeah, Any, anything else on that? Do you have a personal favorite swap? Like um, um, a favorite thing that that is definitely better than the thing that you swapped from, if that makes sense? <laughs> uh, probably probably this, uh, the small uh, subscription. I think that's my favorite. Um, it's quite good as well because um, I used to spend ages in a shop thinking, oh, well, which, which dish tablet, dishwasher tablets are going to do the best job? Um, or what laundry caps um, should I get this time? Whereas they come through my door and I just put them in my dishwasher and I put them in my washing machine and I don't always have loads sitting in the cupboard. It's it's just generally there in the cupboard, ready for use. And yeah, I don't feel like I'm overcrowded with products. Um, and yeah, I definitely would say as well, like the shower gel and shampoo blocks are my favourite up there. Um, I've tried a lot of companies now um, and they're, they're just doing a great job and things are only getting better as well. Uh, you've got to think that people are taking on your feedback um, because they're small businesses. It's all new to them. So they're doing their best. Um, So, yeah, it's just it's just working with with everyone and giving your feedback. um, Yeah. And stick to your favorites once you found them. And that's been really fascinating hearing all of the different things, uh, encyclopedic knowledge you have of sustainable <laughs> living. Um, I was wondering if it was worth uh, asking people um, either through the chat or, or, or speaking out loud if they wish, don't have to start their video if they don't want to, mm-hmm. um, if people have any um, uh, local shops they know or the market or um, any um uh tips etc that haven't been discussed yet and also uh, where they find out about their good ideas for sustainable living as well yep give people a little chance to either tap something into the chat um or or think about what they want to say are there any local outlets around here that you would you've particularly spotted kirsten um so for me um uh, a favorite farm shop of mine um so if you're wanting to buy local um vegetables um and meat and stuff like that is willow tree farm shop in glempsford they, they were actually quite a big uh, establishment now they've actually opened up their own cafe as well um so it's really nice that you can go there and eat food for breakfast and know that it's come from their farm um and they've also now got goats and things like that so they're they're a really good one that i'm i'm really following um and i shopped there a lot through lockdown because obviously traveling to your local supermarket wasn't really allowed um so i use that farm shop um and yeah it's it's absolutely brilliant and they have a fishmonger there as well i think every wednesday so there's not a lot of options there you can get your meat you can get your fish you can get your vegetables and obviously they don't pack anything in plastic it's all just freshly produced so yeah willow tree farm shop's a good one for local food they've got yes, the, I know it's the, the felix stowe um lowest off rather the guy who um appears fridays in claire is there on yes. wednesday as well yeah Sorry, he's there fun. yeah I was just, just going to say, um, they've got the big freezers there as well at um, the Willow Tree Farm Shop, haven't they? And you can sort of, I think it's a biodegradable bag that you get and they do like fruits so if you make smoothies. Um, I think they have like frozen pastries as well, which are great. Like to have Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> frozen pastries just sat in the freezer. <laughs> it's a nice yeah. treat. They have um, fish cakes as well, and like they're like fifty nine p each, which to me that's absolutely amazing. Um, and you just know that everything that they've got in there to their meat, to their fruit and veg, like all their fruit and veg is obviously grown on their farm. And then you know that it's all locally sourced, so it's a really really good point of contact um, for everything. They have also um, jams in there, um, chutneys, yeah, sauces. Um, so they're a really really good source. There's a comment in the uh, chat. Uh, from Aaron saying, uh, um, well, uh, Paul and Aaron are both saying about how good the market is. Uh, but Aaron's also mentioning uh, Karen's jams and, and chutneys. Um, take back the old jars, sterilise and reuse. Yeah, see, that that's absolutely brilliant. Like I said, f- for me, I always reuse um, my glass jars because, for one, that they're, they're long lasting. They're not going to break unless you drop them, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that it's a, it's a good way. And yeah, for me, that's really encouraging that they take them back because 
you're only going to go back there again and buy another jam jar if you really enjoy it so why not take them back and let them reuse them so yeah that, that's really really good to do that I haven't been there so I'll give that one a go I have get the impression perhaps younger people are, are slightly nervous about going to a market in terms of uh, uh, buying their food that way loose. If it's if it's in the supermarket, it's kind of it's all printed and written on, and, and it's all really clear how much something costs. Because I, I don't think I think the the ability to to know how the weight of food um uh is something that is kind of being lost since uh, sort of local butchers closed down and i know there's a new one open in haverhill but um it's a habit that people have lost if if you if, if, if you want four chicken breasts what's that in weight wise people people can count to four but they haven't got a clue what it means in weight wise and i wonder whether markets can be intimidating for younger people yeah, I, I definitely agree with this. Um, so it's actually really strange. Um, so Jamie's Butchers that's actually opened in Haverhill, I used to work for them in their Sudbury branch when I was younger. Um, so I started there. It, my, my whole family have worked with them on a Saturday. So that was my first Saturday job. And for someone that was young, it was really quite scary going in there and being the other side of the counter where I had to serve people the meat because they would come in and it was obviously the older generation that would always be queuing at the door on a Saturday. And they would say, oh, yeah, I, I want my 500 grams of mince. And for me, I was like, oh, I don't know what that looks like. Um, so you obviously rely on the scales and you learn it. But I, I totally agree. Like, I wouldn't know anything about weights if I didn't do a job like that. Um, so yeah, going to the market from the other side, if, if I hadn't had that experience, I would go there and I would, I could, wouldn't quite know, but for everything as an example, um, even though I did that when I was 16, I don't remember the weights now. Um, so a, a way I would see it is don't, don't be scared. Don't think you've got to go there and tell them that you want things in ways. Just say, could I have four apple, apples, please? Could I have... 10 rashes of bacon please and kind of do it in that sense of a way that you understand they'll still they won't judge you for not knowing what weights are but just have confidence in going there and knowing what you want because when you go in the supermarket you're going to pick up um either a packet of three peppers or pick up five that are singularly on their own so if you know what you're going to buy just go to the market and say yeah can I have five apples please they're not gonna yeah look at you and think oh you don't know the way I, I there's other ways around it and I don't think yeah you, you should be scared to go to the market the market is a great place and everyone is so friendly because they run their own businesses and if anything they will help you they will teach you and if you go back to them every week then you never know by the six months down the line you might know what 500 grams of mince is I suppose the farm shop's probably a good maybe uh in between if you're a bit too nervous to go to a market maybe try the farm shop first yeah because the farm shop is good um the willow tree farm one um definitely has like plaques where they write the weight and what the price is so for you you can start like going and holding up and going oh yeah that's quite good or then you can take that information from the farm shop to the market when you next go there's been some great suggestions about going to the market etc karen's champs and chutneys etc and also mario um, I, I don't actually know, I assume that's the name of a market stall holder because um, that's the other thing of course is they don't always have the names up so you can say go to Mario's um, and uh, we'll have to guess um, uh, that one is but again baked goods in paper bags getting away from that plastic yeah thing. that's really really good so I wonder whether people where people get their ideas from because is it is it all social media are there any um facebook sites locally that people use um uh, do you have any favorites particularly kirsten um so there is um big communities on facebook um like worldwide communities um so there is a sustainable living facebook group that i'm on i think it's called sustainable living eco-friendly and something um but i think it's got about 40,000 people on there and for me the education that I get from there is worldwide um, and it's really good for every everyone shares their ideas um, and it's really good and it's really informative like you could go on there and say I've got this leftover what shall I do with it and you would get 20 comments come straight back going oh yeah look, I've done this before and I think that's really important and it's nice that there's like a worldwide 
community of it but again I think more local communities should have their own sustainable living groups and work together as a community because obviously we, we, we're all experiencing the same lifestyle um, whereas obviously worldwide everyone lives completely different so people have got ways they're living in a forest or that there's just different backgrounds and scenarios to everyone's life um, so yeah I think it's more important to bring it back to the community and try and help each other out um, make suggestions on swaps that you've done what you really enjoyed what you wouldn't suggest um, yeah recycle ideas um, I think it's yeah it's really important to just keep sharing um, I would say that's probably probably my favorite group just because it's so educational and there's so many people behind it but it would be quite nice to have a group which is a bit more localized that you can work with um, to work even closer with your own community and see what you can do together um because yeah it's more important i think to work closer together um even though obviously worldwide we all need to make sustainable change and start living more sustainable um i think yeah as communities we need to be a little bit stronger saffron i was just gonna say i suppose as well as social media i suppose just talking to people especially probably some of the older people um in your lives because a lot of the sustainable living stuff is kind of just coming back around from what we did anyway yeah like, um you know generations ago um and you know maybe your parents have learned something from their grandparents or like their grandparents and you know talking about it you know with your family about oh you know how how did you do this before because obviously a lot of the disposable stuff that's come in is new um well relatively new not new new but yeah, I suppose talking to people, maybe asking grandparents or parents what, you know, they used to do, that, that could be something. Yeah, I think as well, don't be scared to talk about it. Um, there's a lot of people out there that think like, oh, I'm just one person. How am I going to make a difference? But if we all had that attitude, nothing's ever going to change. So, yeah, I think we just need to talk about it more. And yeah, I've re really enjoyed obviously talking to you guys about it and everyone else um, over the last couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, I just want to talk more and more about it. Um, and it's, it's it's just all about research and reading. And yeah, you can obviously tell that I, I don't stop reading about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's just getting involved really. And, and that's the important thing. And hopefully as a community, Haverhill as well will come out of the shell and tree plant in more recycle products and things like that. It'll, it'll all slowly get there. We just got to yeah, pull together as a team and yeah think of great ideas and yeah everyone everyone's idea is a good idea as well so if anyone's got an idea then bring it forward certainly in terms of sharing ideas i think perhaps one of the things we want to turn to look at is is how we can help share those ideas and encourage more people to get involved um obviously we have um some big facebook uh, sites um uh, in Haverhill already and we have uh, John on the call now who is one of the coordinators for uh, the very biggest one Haverhill UK um, uh, I know and Saffron can confirm details whether you've heard anything more about our uh, social media specifically for um, uh, sustainable Haverhill I know Sarah um, our marketing manager at the town council was working on that don't know whether you've heard anything more no, I think it's still just in the running at the moment. Um, it's obviously, it would be really great to, I suppose, act as a bit of a, like kind of almost a hub. So like there's loads and loads of stuff going on in Haverhill already. It's like, obviously on this call, we've heard about the jams and things in the market, you know, to be able to share that information on like one platform and maybe, you know, work with some of the other groups. And if I've noticed anything this week, it seems that like there's so many things that overlap, especially with this and the, um, recycling I imagine it probably overlaps quite a lot with the the energy as well um so composting and yeah. the, the the tree wardens will look at um, hedgerows as well so uh, a bit of foraging information will come to it you're absolutely right there yeah I think you're right as well you just need disappearing again a little bit Kirsten 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 Oh. Just for a second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, it's my internet. Um, yeah. So, like you said, I think yeah, we need to yeah have a main hub. So, people like me, people at the market, 
um, who are doing good things. Um, local businesses can just all join in and shout, this is what we do. This is how you can help. Um, and I think, yeah, it would just be a, a bit more of a, a, a good community spirit to her, for someone to go to. And if there's something they're looking for in particular, like I want to make a swap, but I don't know who to go to. That's I think that's the good. Um, so I was wondering whether perhaps what, we, what our, our kind of takeaway from this can be is that we plan um, to make sure that the uh, kind of the, the um, various different social media channels that we set up for Sustainable Haverhill um, follows as many um, uh, different um, sustain local uh, sustainability groups so that uh, it becomes a natural central feed so that it's 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 uh, retweeting and reposting um, all the different things that are already going on um, and so people can have a look at that and also um, others that follow it will will get those things as well um, and I probably also have to look at as you say some offline stuff for how we can help other people um, and uh, 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 think about how we can uh, perhaps pick up stuff in the local newspaper um, or uh, put stuff out on some of the local notice boards, letting people know that groups exist. I would hopefully we'll get back to the opportunity to um, meet face to face so yeah, that, that a lot of groups can get together. Yeah, again, because. The conversation can be a lot more in depth obviously we know we're all been stuck on zoom the last year but again like you said when you're face to face conversation gets flowing and people aren't scared to ask questions whereas obviously on here it's a bit more difficult um whereas you, you can kind of be yourself when it's in person um yeah i think yeah it'll be really really good and like you said putting up some flyers um and things like that it's just it's just to get good to get it known out there i think does John or Aaron have anything they want to add? Um, either you can come on live just on your audio or pop something into the chat if you prefer to do that. Um, I came in very late into the meeting, so I'm not certain what was, so I was in. And I was in a Great Cambridge Partnership meeting as well, so I apologise. So, no, I've got nothing to add, I think, from what I've heard anyway so far. I'd have to watch the uh, podcast back. Thanks, Connor. Kind of, Thanks. Um, Aaron wants to say anything or put anything in the chat. I, I just think um, tying up with the market is is, is, is probably a, a, a good idea. Um, whether we can have some signs or something made, Colin, to almost certify market stalls that are, that are doing good things. Um, yeah, although whether that would um, then they, suggest the others aren't. But yeah, it would be good. I was wondering actually whether some of the people from the market um uh might be able to do something uh, for the schools in terms of um uh, uh talking about where some of the veg etc comes from or whatever it might be um so that um because a, a lot of i think there's a lot of people actually don't even recognize the veg in its natural state and and they're quite surprised to discover it doesn't arrive sliced yeah de 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 definitely You've got people like Karen that already want to do things up um, at the community kitchen. Um, she's probably a great person to talk to. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, and you and John, obviously, you do the Haverhill UK website, so that's um, uh, useful. Or sort of website, Facebook page rather. Um, so that's something that's that can help, certainly help um, spread any useful sustainability messages. Is there anything else that we need to cover this evening? Um, we cover so much uh, of, of uh, with Kirsten. It's it's been um, really really interesting. Okay, in that case, I think what I'll do, I'll, I'll thank you, Kirsten, for um, uh, hosting this today. It's been really absolutely fantastic. 